There are seasons in life when we just don't understand what's going on. We've tried and we've done everything that God told us to do and it seems like it's just not working. No one's around to encourage us, no cheerleaders. It's in those seasons, in those darkest hours. I'm here today to tell you, you got to trust him when you can't trace him. You got to hold on because what's for you will be yours. You'll make it. Now listen. There are days that I don't think I can make it. Some head and heart aches, just don't think I can shake it. But God, He knows just how much I can bear. And never will he leave me in despair It may be hard right now But some way, somehow God will work it out Yes, without me Sam, now you tell them about it. There have been times that I had rather given up on life. Tell the story, man. My brightest time of the day seemed to be at midnight. There's many times that I felt on my mind. And right now I feel so alone hmm. But I know that God Will never leave me on my own It may be hard right now But some way, somehow God will work it out Shadow of a doubt that is hard, but some way, but some way, somehow, God will work it out, and that's when I'll make it. It may be hard right now, but some. you told them you know we've just come through the most difficult season in our lives and one thing I've learned about God is that he's everything he ever promised he would be and I want to say to you today it's not so much of what you're going through my brother my sister it's about what you're going to you're gonna make it it's gonna be all right
praise the Lord, everybody. What another amazing opportunity this is uh, to share and declare the word of God unto you on this day. As always, would you do me a favor? Would you hit that share button, start watch parties, tag, text, tweet, inbox, call, yell down the hallway. Tell somebody to tune in right now. God has a word for them. I'm going to start on today um, a teaching that I'd like to entitled, I Choose Favor. I Choose Favor. Uh, I'm going to use this backdrop scripture, uh, Proverbs chapter 22 and verse number one, where the word of God says, a good name is to be more desired than great wealth. Favor is better than silver and gold. I choose favor. I think it's important for me to say to you from the onset that you and I need favor if we are ever going to obtain the future we're dreaming about. It will not come to fruition. It will not materialize. Um, Simply because you have faith. What I want to say to you, and I hope you hear me really good, is that if your dreams are going to come to pass, if those ambitions you have are ever going to be realized, then you must have faith and favor. The Bible says in Luke chapter 2, verse number 52, and Jesus increased in wisdom and stature, and in favor with God and with man, which means that favor is going to be exclusively responsible for the increase that I experience in every realm and in every area of my life. My faith and my favor is going to be responsible for the increase of uh, productivity, the increase of wisdom, the increase of influence, the increase of exposure. Every area of increase in your life is going to be the result of favor. Now, when we talk about favor, most people kind of deduce favor down um, to the ability to gain something in the material. I got a new car today, so I'm favored. Well, that doesn't necessarily require favor. That requires a large sum of cash or a great credit score. But favor transcends those things you can uh, get or receive in the natural simply based on your natural means. Favor is the affection of God towards you that releases an influence through you so that other people are inclined to like, trust, and cooperate with you. That, that is what favor is. It is this divine attractiveness. Uh, it is this supernatural appeal uh, that God puts on you, that God gives you, that releases influence, that draws people to you, that they will like you, trust you, and cooperate with you in order for what you are desiring to come to pass. Its favor is when people make adjustments in their own personal schedules and often shift their own priorities in order that they may proceed to assist and be an asset to you. Favor is when God uses somebody else or moves through people uh, to provide you with special advantages and cause you to receive preferential treatment. When I have favor, it literally means that I'm able to walk in unusual, unexplainable degrees of privilege. Lay your hands on yourself and say, I choose favor because the reality is that favor can uh, get you access into more places than money ever will. The truth is I've been places where people had more money than me, but they had less access to the environment than I did because it doesn't matter how much favor, how much money you have, you can't buy favor. Favor is the God-given attractiveness and divine appeal that God assigns to your life that causes everything you need, want, and desire. That's according to the will and word of God to gravitate toward your life 
without strain, without struggle. That, that's really what I'm prophesying over your life now, that you're getting ready uh, to be the recipient of favor that's about to be attracted to you. And God is creating such a gravitational pull to where you are that it's literally going to blow your mind. What we must understand, ladies and gentlemen, is that favor um, is not accidental. It is an attraction that God gives you. He literally causes you to be irresistible. People are irresistibly drawn to bless you. He causes people um, to help you, to want to go out of their way. Please hear me. Stop taking it for granted that people sometimes shelve or delay doing for themselves in order to do for you. Um, the moment you take that for granted, um, then that favor will be recalled off of your life. The moment you start feeling entitled to other people's time and attention and resources, then that favor is recalled over your life. But anytime you see somebody making effort to help you, to bless you, to benefit you, to be there for you, you ought to lift your hands and thank God because it is the favor of God that has been directed towards your life where God uses other people to be vital and instrumental toward your life. And I, I get up every day and I decree that I'm attracting every single thing I need. It's an interesting story uh, in the book of Ruth about uh, a man by the name of Boaz and Naomi. What the interesting part relative to this teaching on favor is that Boaz had an attraction to Naomi before he had any, re in, any interaction with her. And I want to tell you that people are going to see you, notice you, observe you, and they're going to extend favor toward you without ever having any, any interaction with you. Um, it's like um, quite often I go into restaurants and I'm sitting down eating and I'm waiting on the check to arrive only for the server to come and notify me that the check has already been taken care of. And then I'll look across the room and somebody's waving to gesture to me that it was them who paid for it, but I've never seen them before, never had a conversation with them before, never had the privilege of meeting them before, but it was something uh, that I did through ministry that they received from afar, that they heard, that they observed. And even though they had no interaction personally with me, their reaction to me was based on the attractiveness of favor that was on my life. I'm telling you now, I'm prophesying over your life this day that the thing that's on you, that degree of favor that's on you is getting ready to be undeniably attractive. Get ready for people to react to your favor. People who've never had any interaction with you, people who've never been introduced to you before, you've never made their acquaintance, but God is going to use people that you never had any interaction with previously to perhaps position you uh, to be blessed like you have never been blessed before. So we're talking about favor. I choose favor. Other people are running after money and all that because what, what, it doesn't make sense. You could have a million dollars cash and I can have the favor and get more than you can with that. Because again, the Bible teaches us that a good name is to be more desired than great wealth and favor is better than silver and gold. It's not saying that I cannot have both, but if I had to make a distinct choice, I choose favor. Shout back at me, say, I, I choose favor because favor literally creates, hear me, and brings the necessary provision that you need without a request. <laughs> I'm going to let that sink in for a moment. When you got favor on your life, favor literally brings the necessary provision you need without a request, without you having to ask anybody or disclose to anybody, well, I need this. And, you know, if I had this, I could finish this project. When you have favor on your life, God aligns people and lets them tap into the frequency of your need. And based on them tapping into that frequency of your need, they make themselves available, their resourcefulness as well as their resources 
to meet the need that you have. I hope you are getting what I'm saying because favor causes people to delight in you and they develop a desire, this insatiable desire to help you. Some of you are struggling, struggling to get a dream off the ground, struggling to sustain or maintain something right now. I want to tell you that it's just um, in, in not a matter of moments from now, favor is getting ready to show up. And favor is going to come in, delight in you, and develop a desire to help you get to where you are going. Have you ever run into somebody after you tell them your dream, your vision, your goal? Seems like they're more excited about it than you. Seems like they're trying to come up with ways and means and um, increase uh, to be able to help you to fulfill that dream. That's what's getting ready to come into your life. I'm telling you what I know. I'm living in such favor, I don't even have the time to articulate uh, how amazing that this level of favor is on my life. Now, I want you to understand people are getting ready. So brace yourself. They're getting ready to extend favor towards you because of God's interaction with you. Oh, God, now you got to get this. People are about to start extending favor towards you because they observe and they are they are aware of God's interaction with you and the increase that others are receiving because of their association with you. God, I know it's midweek, but I really do need an usher now because there's somebody that is watching you now, observing you now, and has realized that you are a source of favor, a source of blessing, that if they sow into you, serve you, submit to you, tap into what you are doing, they're getting ready to yield a bountiful harvest of favor in their life. In Genesis 39, verses 2 through 4, uh, records something that is quite astounding. The Bible says, and the Lord was with Joseph and he was a prosperous man and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him. Pay attention. And the master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. And then Joseph found grace and favor in his sight and he served him and he made him overseer over his house and all that he had, he put it into his hands. I'm trying to tell you that when people notice the kind of interaction and the way heaven responds to your presence, they're going to be inclined to make the necessary investments. Watch this to have your presence close to them. Um, you know, it, it's not being arrogant, but it is being selective as to whose company you're in. You, you have to watch it because some people, when they see how God interacts with you and they see how other people are increasing because of their association with you, you're going to have to watch yourself and begin to discern uh, the leeches and the people who have ill will and ulterior motives toward you. But there are some people who are going to recognize the favor so heavily on you. They're going to say everywhere he goes, he's blessed. Everything he does is a success. Everything he engages in is excellent and it excels and it's done at an exceptional level. The Bible says that when the master saw that the Lord was with him and that everything that Joseph's hand touched prospered, he found favor and he found grace in the sight of the master. And the master gave him a promotion, made him an overseer of the house and he put everything that he had in his hands. I want to tell you that the hands of the favored are about to be abundantly filled. Now you are, I, I, don't, I don't know where you are. I don't even know if you can shout or dance where you are, but that's some shouting stuff right there. I want to tell you that the hands of the favored are about to be filled. Say that with me. The hands of the favored are about to be filled. I want to pronounce to you that the floodgate of blessing is a 
about to be amazing. God's going to allow you to acquire more in this season than you ever had in any season prior. He's about to cause you to amass significant amounts of increase of means of wealth of prosperity because you are the favored child of God. Now, every day you get up, sometimes you may feel frustrated, but the frustration doesn't cancel the fact that I am favored. Somebody shout back at me, I choose favor. I choose favor. Now, it's significant for you to understand um, that favor is a reaction and a result of loyalty. Let me let that sink in for a moment. Because most people are under the erroneous impression favor um, is a result of your dancing, passing out in church, speaking in tongues. It's none of that. Favor, divine favor. The God attractiveness, that supernatural appeal that God applies to your life, it is a reaction and a result of loyalty. Proverbs 14, 35 says, the king's favor is toward a wise servant, but his wrath is against him that causes shame. His favor, the king's favor is toward a wise servant. Somebody who's serving, somebody who's diligent, somebody who's completely invested in the task at hand. When you are a wise servant, it is synonymous with loyalty. You have this commitment that is unparalleled, that is undaunted, that is unwavering. Because anybody who has favor on their life, very obvious, very apparent favor on their life, it is a reaction and a result of loyalty, not kissing up. Not trying to be the most popular, but the people who really carry the heavy favor on their life, it's a result and a reaction of their loyalty. Now, hear me when I tell you this, because favor comes upon anybody who does more than what is required. If you're always doing what is required, you will never get what is desired. I'll give you that again. I ain't going to charge you down for that. If you're only doing what's required, you're never going to get what you desire. Favor is a result of you doing more than what is required, going the extra mile, showing the ambition, taking the initiative to do more than the master even expects of you, even required of you, if you do more than what is required, you'd hear me, you're going to be the recipient of way more than you ever desired in your life. Because hear me, favor, you know favor is on your life when someone wants to be a vital and instrumental participant in your success. You know your favorite because people come around you not to take from you, but to add to you. Uh, they're not coming to be a leech. Uh, they're not coming to deduce who you are. They are coming to add value. And I'm praying today that somebody's watching me. God has taken such notice of your loyalty and your commitment that God's sending you people that's about to add value to your life. It's when God literally assigns someone or people to your life to be to be both instrumental and intentional. Watch this concerning your advancement. These are people, they don't have a problem with you getting more money. They don't have a problem with you growing. They don't have a problem with the kind of house that God puts you in. They are just there to be both instrumental and intentional about your advancement. Now, I want to talk to somebody today and tell you to brace yourself for favor like you have never experienced in your life. God's about to touch somebody who's getting ready to see the need that you have and swiftly make moves to meet it. Oh, you might as well receive the prophetic word today because I'm telling you what I know, what I'm charged with by the Holy Ghost to release into your life. There's about to be a swift manifestation of those things you need in your life because favor shortens the distance between your dreams and the realization of them. When you have favor on your life, people will yield their, their expertise, their experience, their resources to shorten the distance between what you want and the reality 
of you getting them on your life. And let me close and I'm going to tell you this. Who you respect and honor guarantees favor on your life. When you are a person that exhibits honor, uh, a person who has reverence and respect uh, for people or the person in your life that God is using to guide you, help govern you, help shape your gift, um, help mold you into the mogul uh, that you are certainly becoming, you have to honor them because honor will always guarantee favor on your life. Credibility causes favor to overtake you. When you are credible, when you do what you say you're going to do, um, when, when, you are, when you have credibility, credibility creates for you an environment where people are always listening out to see what need they can meet for you because of your exhibit of credibility. Not only credibility garners favor, but dependability. When you're there, no matter what, I can't tell you. I wish I had time to tell you all the times. And, and sometimes people look at you. They'll look at me and say, well, how do you get to do this and how are you doing that? That's because you don't understand. There's a dependability factor and quality um, that I pride myself on. That if, if I'm nothing else, I'm loyal and I'm dependable. Sick, have a cold, <laughs> uh, hurting, frustrated, disappointed. My level of commitment and loyalty and dependability uh, to my leaders, uh, to uh, everybody who's instrumental in my life, that is a major trait that most people don't have and wonder why favor is not upon your life. So you have to, you have, to have credibility. You have to have dependability. Watch this. You have to have availability. Some people want favor, but they want it on their terms. And they don't understand sometimes the greatest favor in your life is um, a result of you being tested in an inconvenient time. You know, um, I, 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 there have been some, so many times I've had leaders call and say, can you do this? And I was walking in the venue to do something else. And so I said, yes, sir, I can do it. Forget that I paid $200 for this ticket. I leave there and go to where they assigned me to be. Go to, I, I was always where I needed to be. And I think I need to emphasize that to people who are, who are trying to figure out how to get the favor on your life. You got to be available. You can't just be available when it's convenient or, uh, you know, when it works well with your schedule. No, 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 no. If you're going to have favor on your life, then you have to yield your availability to somebody who is in a higher rank of authority than you. That is, that creates um, a season of advancement for your life. So if I'm going to have favor, I have to have number one, credibility. Number two, dependability. Number three, availability. And if you have and express and display those qualities, let me tell you now, favor is going to overtake you like you have never seen it before. Because I want to tell you, you don't even realize it. But somebody now is observing you who has the capability of greatly blessing you. Let me say that to you again. Somebody's watching you now. They've been, in fact, they've been watching you for a little while just to weigh out your consistency, your commitment, um, how dedicated you are. Because I told you favor is a response and a reaction to loyalty. When you are loyal, oh my God, you got favor. No questions about it. Whenever you need anything, Nobody questions you. Nobody, you don't have to have a long explanation. You don't have to go into all the details of what's wrong. Your, your, your loyalty and your commitment to them. Their response is, whatever you need, it's yours. Now I want to release that over your life because when you are loyal to God, committed to his kingdom, committed to the work of God, there are going to be some junction where, where God says, no question about it. You can have it. No. You know, I need this and, and I have to have this by then. And they say, okay, okay, that's fine. You don't have to tell me all that. How much is that you need? I'll have it to you tomorrow. Now, I'm telling you from personal testimony. I know this happens. It just happened. While I'm teaching this to you, I am experiencing it even now. 
Because when you are loyal to God and we are, when you are loyal to God's people, when you are loyal to those um, who are higher than you in rank and authority, when you are loyal to your leaders and your mentors, the Bible says Jesus grew in wisdom and stature. Watch this with both God and man. Stop talking about all I need is God. No, you don't. You need favor according to the Bible in two realms. That is the earth realm and the heavenly realm. You need somebody to like you. You can't give your life talking about all I need, King Jesus, and that's it. No, you need, you need an employer to like you. You need a mentor to like you. You need a banker that likes you. You need a judge that likes you. So I'm praying this day that when the options are presented to you, I want you to choose having a good name and favor because that's better than anything. I can go in places now and just give my name and sign off on stuff. No paperwork, no, no rigorous ordeal because I choose favor. I decree now as I'm praying for you, stretch your hands for me wherever you are. If you're stationary, I want you to come in agreement. That favor is getting ready to just explode in your life. I almost can't wait to see how just ridiculously blessed you are because You've heard this word. You're going to apply these principles and you are going to stay in your place of favor. Watch how fruitful your life becomes. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every individual that's watching me this day that will rewatch over and over and over again. Those who will catch the replay later. But I send through these airwaves this day a supernatural attractiveness, a divine appeal and gravitational pull that's going to summons everything they need to where they are currently. Father, you said no good thing will you withhold from them that walk up right before you. So I decree this day that as your people are walking up right before you, that you are opening doors, granting opportunities, releasing significant um, platforms that are going to amaze people who thought it never happened for them. And I decree your people are favored all the days of their life. And there's nothing the devil in hell can do about it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You ought to give God praise wherever you are watching from this day. Well, we're getting ready to honor the Lord in our giving. It's giving time. It's our global giving experience. As I say it, people literally around the world are joining you in this very moment. And they're getting ready to make some kingdom investments and sacrifices because this ministry has proven week in and week out to be good ground. And uh, God just blesses in this place right here in this virtual sanctuary. So I want those of you who are tithing this day, I want you to prepare the Lord's tithe. Maybe you didn't get a chance or an opportunity to tithe on Sunday, or maybe you did and God just prospered you since Sunday. And now you are doing the honorable thing by releasing the 10 part unto God. Let me tell you, you can't beat God's giving no matter how hard you try. You ever get in a giving match with God, you'll never win. God is the giver of all things. Every good and perfect gift comes from God. So I want you to release your tithe. The giving means are right here, of course, at the bottom of the screen. I want you to release the Lord's tithe. And then I'm going to challenge at least a hundred of you that would just hear my voice and obey it. No arm twisting, no begging. There are at least a hundred of you that will say, Bishop, I will stand with you this day and release at least a $50 faith seed gift into the work of Jesus Christ this day. $50 seed for many of you. Trust me. I know. I see how you dress. I'm seeing how you live. And that's not, it's not a whole lot of money for you, but it's a faith investment. It's a seed. It's an opportunity for God to show himself strong and mighty in your life. So I need at least a hundred of you that will do that with me on this day. Say, Bishop, I'm doing it right now. Go to giving means are right there at the bottom of your screen and obey God. Watch how favor just explodes in your life. Of course, you can't give what you don't have. But those of you that have it, I'm going to trust you to give it. Those of you who don't, I want you to get the very best seed you have on this midweek. And I want you to plant it by faith. Because when you give it by faith, God is under obligation. He obligates himself to respond to anything done by faith. So whether that's $42 or $37 or $22 or $12 or $1, 
I want you to obey God and do it. Giving means are right there. Uh, if you don't like to chew or choose not to give electronically, there's a mail in address right here at the bottom of the screen. I want you to make uh, and take advantage of that and uh, watch how the heavens open over your life. Keep on giving. God's going to prosper you in favor your finances. I promise you that. Well, I don't want to assume before I go that everyone is watching me, you're saved, you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, or that you have a church home, whether it's one you can go through locally or one that you can connect with across the world like this one. But if you're watching and you need a savior, I want to offer Jesus Christ to you this day. For there is no other name given under heaven whereby men might be saved, but at the name of Jesus Christ. And if that's you, my brother, my sister, there's an email address right here at the bottom of the screen. Send me your information. I've got staff waiting right now to help facilitate your next move of salvation. Maybe a backslider. Come on back. There's still room at the cross for you. Or maybe you love God and have a relationship, but you're saying, I need a church home. I need a pastor. Whether I can see him locally or whether I can tune in from around the world and catch you every week. Listen, I'm talking to you. If that's you I'm talking to, send me your email address, send me your phone number. We're going to reach out to you um, and help facilitate your decision for Jesus Christ this day. And I want you to know the Bible says the angels are rejoicing over one soul. I want you to know I'm rejoicing even now for the lives that are going to be saved on this day. Hallelujah. Well, I am out of time for this session. God knows I hate to leave you, but I have to go. Always remember, as I always say in party, that things can change for you at any moment. I'll see you next time. Well, hello, everyone. I've got some exciting news for you. The Leaders Lab Virtual Edition is happening Saturday, August the 14th at 10 a.m. Many of you have been asking, when's the next Leaders Lab? When are we coming together for the next Leaders Lab? Well, I want you to know the virtual edition is here. So I need you to register now. Registration begins right now. Don't delay, don't wait. Be among the first to register. Go to henrybolden.anywhereseat.com. Again, that's henrybolden.com anywhereseat.com. Registration is only $29. Believe me, you're going to get your money's worth, beyond your money's worth. Uh, so make sure you bring your team, you register your team, your staff, your circle, whoever you plan on doing life, ministry, and business with. They need to be a part of the Leaders Lab. It's not just for established leaders. It's for those who are aspiring uh, in the area of leadership, those who have a sense that they have a greater purpose than the one they're walking out now. I want to give you the tools, the strategies, the insight, the intel um, as to how to lead on a new level. I'm going to be talking about uh, a variety of things that are going to really impact and help increase uh, your success as a leader. We're going to talk about team building and collaborative effort and how to build funding sources for your business and so much more. But again, I need you to register. Go to henrybolden.anywhereseat.com and register right now. Success has a formula and I want to be the one that shows it to you. I'll see you in the Leaders Lab.